Hello everyone. So welcome back to my channel. Um, today doing something a little bit different uh, since we sort of finished off the A, trying to find ideas for videos to do and things. Um, and I had these two cylinder hydraulic cylinders sitting around. Um, I know I had mentioned these I think when I'd finished my G looking for projects to do uh, and then I ended up tearing into my A. Um, so I've never had one of these apart so I, I thought we would tear into one and uh, hopefully get one working. To be honest I haven't actually tried these on a tractor but I figure we'll at least take one apart and uh, see what all is involved. I have the hydraulic manual that I showed in another video uh, that I'll try and remember to put here in the top right of the corner. Uh, top right corner of the video uh, talking about the different manuals for the tractors and such um, so these are both cylinders that were sort of sized or specific for the John Deere A uh, the part numbers on them all start with A they had cylinders for B's that were a little bit smaller um, I, I plan for this to be at least a two part uh, video series one taking it apart and, and one putting back together um, I have the body and parts of a B cylinder, so maybe I, I should have brought them and, and had shown them in this video how they're just smaller. And then there was also a G cylinder, um, but uh, those, of, of course, are more rare because Gs were more rare. Um, so let's start off with the first thing, though. If you ever have one of these sitting around, do not, never, ever hook this up to any tractor other than a two-cylinder tractor and the uh, reason for that is the operating pressures is the pressures of the two-cylinder systems are much lower pressure systems um, I, I forget I want to say it's something like 600 psi or, or something like that very low compared to today's uh, hydraulics on tractors so what will happen is if you hook it up this up to a, a newer style basically anything you know new generation and above if you look on this cylinder there's a huge crack here if you hook it up to anything new it's just gonna bust the main housing so like this cylinder although it's the cleanest and looks the best this housing is totally junk and garbage um, so I don't know if it's worth finding another housing for this this one looks okay um, so for now, I'm just going to tear this one apart uh, to, to see um, everything, make sure I don't learn something uh, that I, I can't use and taking apart this one. Uh, so we'll take this apart and uh, go from there. Um, how these were kind of unique, they, they were designed you know, somewhat with the power troll in mind. So when John Deere introduced the power troll system, um, it was very unique at the time because you could, you know, do a partial rise. It wasn't just full up, full down on the cylinders. But these hydraulic cylinders back then, they were meant to be stay with the tractor, then they could be used for every different implement. Um, so like this would go on a plow, and then you'd take it off, and maybe you'd put it on a disc and whatever. And then you could control the extension uh, by way of... Uh, set pins in here that that would limit the stroke of the cylinder um, I don't have a set of pins right now I know where I can get some and whenever I get one of these fully together I'll, I'll go ahead and uh, uh, buy a set so uh, with that I guess uh, we'll start tearing it apart here I'll, I'll look at the manual and see kind of what I should do first um, they are free um, down this shouldn't be able to pull all the way out, but that, that one is free. And then this one is really free. Yeah, look at that. That's, that's a really nice cylinder. Um, this one still has, it looks like, the correct pin in it and everything. So that's kind of nice. Um, I think I got these from a friend. He just kind of didn't want them anymore. So uh, hopefully we'll, we can do something good with them. So give me a moment and uh, step back and see where I want to go with these. Alright, so I got these bolts here busted loose, not at my normal shop, where I have power tools, so it took a little work to bust these loose. 
Um, yeah, to give you all kind of an update, I'm trying to talk my wife into letting me get another project tractor. So far it's been a no. Not that I blame her. She says I'm too busy, and of course if I get one, then that's what I want to work on, and I don't have time. We'll see. Um, kind of a challenging part of life right now with three kids. But, uh, we're getting along. Well, of course, we're getting along, but we're getting through it. You know what I mean? Um, so yeah, manual says take this end cap off, and then at the end of the cylinder here, and this is where I, I may just show an experience with this stuff. I've never had any sort of hydraulic cylinder apart, so um, I won't be able to tell you, hey, this is unlike any other hydraulic cylinder you've ever seen. Um, just don't know. But anyway, on the piston, it looks like there's a nut here on, on the top side that it'll all come apart. Let me see if we can break that free a little bit. Aha. All right. There we go, the top of our cylinder with the plug. Turn this baby around. And that's where got a nut in here castle nut and let me go get some uh, needle nose to get out that cotter pin okay uh, I forget if I mentioned it those bolts here were seven eighths uh, this is inch and an eighth um, took some serious torque actually to remove it Alright, so we got a castle nut, then I'll just save you all the time to get the parts out of here. Alright, so I put this back on the piston once I have these pieces out. And actually, probably the easiest thing to do is actually just pull the piston out with the nut off. So you got your nut. You've got your end cap piece on here, and then we'll take this apart in a minute, but all your various seals, so here's, um, make sure I got the camera right, so there's seal one, you can see the, the lip there of course is to the outside, and then we've got a seal on this back side, same thing. Like there's some sort of I don't know packing or something here on both of them. Let's look at the parts diagram. To see what was there. It looks like some sort of washer or seal or something. And then you had another one of these pieces and fake washer. That was that. All right, now on the other end, we'll take this cap off here. These are the little 9 16 bolts. And then I had hammered these um, things out here. So, there must be a seal in there. Let me. There's this piece that came out, and then, uh, oh, there's a gasket there. And uh, let, let me hammer this all the way out so we can get a better look in there. All right, so I didn't have a 
a good pick with me, so that was a little bit harder. Um, so there's supposed to be like shims here made for this. It looks like I didn't pick this off, it just looks like one gasket though. Um, anyway, um, and, and the manual, we'll talk about the shims when we go to put this back together. So in this here was the seal in there. I just used kind of a screwdriver, picking in there different sides get, to get it out since I didn't have a good pick with me. They call this the V seal assembly. So on the back side here, this almost feels like a paper gasket on a shim of sorts. And then, I don't know if these are, in the parts diagram it shows these as like a bunch of pieces. I can't tell if these are scratches on it from me maybe prying on it or if it's a bunch of individual um, pieces. Maybe that's old and uh, they updated this to, to one piece. I'll, I'll have to go back up. Oh, nope. Hold on a second. Whoa, whoa. All right, so there's one. Well, that's interesting. So it's tapered. Let's see if I can show that. Get the focus right. You can see it's almost like a Belleville washer flat. And then it curls in. So those, the, the curved end face the, the top. And then, I assume there's more, yep. So a bunch of V's, a bunch of V seals. There's, there's one, two, looks like here's four. Three, four, and then this looks like one big one. Yeah, so this just has the face that, um, that those kind of recesses sit into, and then the flat that uh, that sits up against. Interesting. And that's it. That completes, I mean, sort of disassembly. Um, this, I was able to actually pull this out. I think you can kind of see someone painted it, so it was a little difficult to pull out because these are supposed to be just like, you know, shiny chrome not chrome but you know what I mean shiny metal um, if you wanted to, to take this apart it's just a bolt here or nut and then these parts come off okay so fast forward so I got the other cylinder apart um, it's very interesting the manual reads um, that the um, the cylinders might be a, a little different I forget how it words it I got my hands too dirty I don't want to touch it um, so I took these apart and I realized that the uh, push rods, if you want to call it, are actually different. Um, so first off, looking at the ends, um, this one here, so this is not the one that I showed individually, step by step taken apart. It has this special pin here that you can use uh, in order to release that pin. This one does not have that. And secondly, um, the the seals, I, I slipped these back on there so that they were, you know, similar and everything was put together. Uh, the V seal was about the same. There were no shims on this one, uh, so that's what I assume these are here. But what was really interesting was the end, the actual piston, if you want to call it, um, was drastically different. So, you know, this piece had these thin pieces here and two seals um, and this one just didn't have that it it's almost like it's missing pieces um, but it, it just it looks totally different uh, so I'm gonna have to look at the manual so that there was one seal here and then this bottom was totally different from this side I just there was no washer down here like this one just completely different piece so um, I'm gonna have to look at the parts diagrams and see you know what all I can get and what it's gonna cost and whatever um, yeah that, both of these are, are pretty nice this 
This rod is very clean, as you can see. There's no pinning or anything on it. This one could just use a little, um, you know, emery cloth or something. But uh, yeah, hopefully, uh, rebuild them soon. So if there, uh, there should be a part two video to this. Hopefully, putting one uh, together and getting it to work. Uh, so if I have that video done already, um, I'll put a link to that here at the end of this video. Um, that's about all I have for today. So uh, if there's any other videos you guys want to see, I, I thought about doing a video talking about the oil heads, uh, you know, the oil filter body heads um, in these tractors because I keep getting questions uh, about them and, you know, the, the stud and the oil head breaking or, or you know, the, the threads breaking in the oil head and things like that. So I'll probably do a video on that hopefully sometime soon. So if you guys have anything else, uh, let me know. Hope you all are having a good day, and we'll talk to you later.